South Carolina, Oregon State would be able to punch a ticket to Cleveland. And as usual, South Carolina came out punching the opposition, especially in the paint. There is just literally no stopping this team. The hallmark of all Don Staley great teams, championship teams, have been great players on the inside and the ability to dominate the paint. The Gamecocks 24 points in the paint in the first half, looking to go to 36-0, make their fourth straight Final Four. Oregon State looking to get back for the first time since 2016. Donovan Hunter, Beavers trying to stay in this one. Oregon State was dominated, as I mentioned, in the paint, but they dominated in one metric, three-point shooting. So they're able to hang with the nation's best team until the third quarter when South Carolina turned on the afterburners. Raven Johnson, then Tessa Johnson from virtually the same spot on the floor. South Carolina beginning to open it up. Ashlyn Watkins, Gamecocks end the quarter on a 15-5 run. They're up double digits entering the fourth. And for most teams, that means night-night. Tamea Gardner for three. Got to give Scott Ruick's coup company. They hung in. They did everything they could to make it a six-point game. But South Carolina is simply longer and more athletic than any team they face, outscoring Oregon State by 30 in the paint. And they've got their fourth straight trip to the Final Four. It never gets old, no matter how frequently you go. It's very special because, like I said earlier, I was the little girl dreaming of being up there, and now I am. And especially with my teammates, like my team, I love my team. I can't ask for a better team and coaches. Each time we get an opportunity to cut down some nets to go to the Final Four, it's really special. Because you don't know when it's going to be the last time that, that you'll do it. And, you know, more times than not, there are players on the team that didn't experience it. We had, I don't know, six players on this team that didn't experience cutting down the net. And I, I want their experience to be as special as the very first time that we've been able to cut down the nets to go to our first Final Four. On their way to Cleveland again, fourth straight Final Four. It's incredible. SEC history, LSU, Tennessee, it's been done. South Carolina the latest to do it. And Staley will try to win her third championship, which would make her the fifth D1 coach with at least three titles. Back in the 2021, due to the pandemic, the entire NCAA men's tourney was played in Indy. Remember that? The women staged all of their games in San Antonio. And then pictures began to emerge of the discrepancies in weight rooms and training tables between the genders. Then NCAA President Mark Emmert called it, quote, inexcusable and deeply disappointing. And those might be the perfect words to describe the debacle before Texas and North Carolina State tipped off for a spot in the Final Four Sunday in Portland, Oregon. They discovered the three-point lines on each side of the floor were different distances. The NCAA said they could remeasure the arcs, but it would take an hour. Both coaches, Vic Schaefer of Texas and Westmore of North Carolina State, eventually decided to play the game with the dueling distances. If you're wondering, Sweet 16 games on Friday and Saturday were played with this error. And so was this one. Both coaches pacing it off, but they said, let's play this game. It's on national television. It's on ABC. It could be a great ending. We're trying to build this sport. The ending has to be where millions can find it. And millions are discovering just how special Isaiah James is. This is the end of the court, by the way, with the standard three-point line. If you're wondering, so interesting that the three-point line was the run-up to this game and all the problems. The three-point shooting was the problem in the first half for Texas because they couldn't stop the pack from behind the arc. Six for nine from downtown. James at 29 in the Sweet 16 stunner over Stanford, and she is becoming a national sensation. The NC State men have one of their own. She certainly qualifies for the Wolfpack women's team. Madison Booker, McDonald's All-American, one of the best freshmen in the country, trying to keep them in it. This is the short side of the court, if you're wondering. So if you're Isaiah James, it doesn't really matter. You're connecting from the proper distance and the shorter distance as Texas would come up just a bit short. James was great. Led them in scoring, rebounding, played all 40 minutes, had seven threes, and puts them in the final four. For North Carolina State, this moment, simply put. It's just amazing, you know, really is. I mean, that's your goal. That's every player's goal, every coach's goal. Uh, when they start their career, when they start every season, is to ultimately get to get to the Final Four. So, um, and I don't think we'll be satisfied. I think we'll still be hungry. Uh, but, you know, we're going to really enjoy this plane ride home. 
given how well you shot, would it have mattered where the three-point line was? Uh, not at all. Not at all. They don't shoot at that thing anyway, <laughs> so it don't matter. I tell them to move in every day. <laughs> I got to give credit to all the players. They said, look, we each had one half mm -hmm. at the right three-point line, so don't make a bigger story out of it than it is. But let's be honest, this is a big story. Teams have combined to shoot 29% from deep on the shorter side. That was on the left-hand portion, if you're watching left to right on your TV, compared to 33% on the standard side, which also saw eight more attempts. That's five games over the course of three days, and nobody noticed. Both coaches now weighing in with some real honesty. I wish I hadn't have known, to be honest with you. Uh, but, like I said, it was a tough call because, you know, it is a little bit of difference. It is a, an unusual situation, but, um, like I said, I don't know that it was an advantage or disadvantage either way. We both played a half on each end. Well, I hate to say this, but I have a lot of colleagues that would say only in women's basketball. I mean, it's, it's a shame, really, that it even happened. But it is what it is. I mean, I, I'm not the culprit here. You guys are asking me about something that I had no control over. So Vic Schaefer ain't the problem. <laughs> Vic Schaefer, though, is voicing the problem. The big question moving forward, we got one more game in Portland Monday, UConn-USC playing for a spot in the Final Four. In a statement, the NCAA said the problem will be corrected. They blamed it on a vendor that they had outside contracted to take care of all this. The NCAA said they will also investigate how all of this happened once the time is right. This is hardly the only faux pas we've seen on the women's side. NC State's first round matchup against Chattanooga. One of the refs, Tommy Paris, had to be switched out at the half after it was learned she had previously received a master's from Chattanooga. It's just a hint of impropriety. Hannah Hidalgo had to remove her nose ring. She played with it all season, but it's clearly against NCAA rules, and they started enforcing it during the Sweet 16. Notre Dame would end up losing and ending their season, and then the on-court fiasco on Sunday with the measurement mishaps again. They say overnight it'll be done, and when Juju and Beckers take the floor and fire away from three, it'll all be legit. <laughs>